is right in front of you. Everything that you can give, we want to be returned. Nothing here. It's not in constant change. Constant change. This can come with something. Is everybody welcome it is great to have you here at freedom church welcome if you're joining us online i don't know about you i'm feeling ready for church this morning um i don't know how your week has been i don't know whether you're feeling great whether life is good or whether life's feeling a bit tough or stressful or overwhelming but whether life is great or hard i think you're in the right place you're surrounded by people who equally want to come and just lift their eyes to God and to take a deep breath and to remind yourself and ourselves of who God is and why we believe what we believe. And it's why we always start in worship. And I thought Phil articulated it so beautifully last week that worship is about reminding ourselves who God is, but also about reminding ourselves who we are in the light of who God is. And that's why it's so powerful. It grounds us. It gives us perspective if life feels a little bit overwhelming. And it just moves our headspace back into that place of remembering there is a God. He loves us. And he wants to be in relationship with us. So you're in the right place. Why don't you stand to your feet? And I'm going to pray. And then we're just going to get straight into worship. And I feel like this is your moment. If you're feeling a bit distracted or your mind is all over the place at the moment, just take a big breath. And say, God, help me to see you this morning. And as I pray now, just allow your mind, your heart to lift up above the stresses and the circumstances and to see your Savior, Jesus. So Heavenly Father, Lord, I'm so aware on any Sunday morning like this, there's just so much going on in people's lives People have had some wins this week and people have had some losses or disappointments. It's all here in this room. 
And I may, may not know it all, God, but you do. You see every moment that each of us has been through this week. And you want to meet us there. And Lord, we want to look to you. We don't want to get caught up in everything that's going on. We just want to live in the space where we are mindful of who you are and that we are filled by your spirit. You are Emmanuel. You are God with us. And Father, we just, we sit in this space this morning knowing that, that your presence is here, that you can do things that transform us. You can shift our attitude on things. You can do miracles. And it's why we come to worship you because you are Lord of all. You are God of all creation. And so in Jesus' name, we welcome you here. We lift up our voices in worship and we praise you and we honor you. And everyone said, amen. Come on, church, let's worship together. Good morning, everyone. Let's sing this out together. In this time of desperation,
breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Who's got breath this morning? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, good. If you could certainly pick people with, without their hands up, uh, pray for those people around you. Um, and this song says, as long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise. Why don't we say that? As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise. Let's sing this.
at the moment that you can't see a way through. Maybe school is rubbish at the moment. Maybe it's to do with your friends. Maybe it's something at work. Maybe it's a personal matter. Something in a relationship. But often in our lives, we just have something going on where we think, I can't see the way through. I I don't know what to do. I don't know what the next step is. And if that's you, I want just when we sing this again in a moment. I want you to have an intentional moment where you take all of that uncertainty and not knowing what to do and just say, God, I trust you with this. It's a powerful statement because it's a transfer. It's a transfer from thinking like we have to be able to work it all out by ourselves, And it's a transfer onto God saying, God, I cast my cares onto you because I know that you care for me. And so as we sing, you are the way maker. I want you to do it with that heart of trust that says, God, I'm just handing this over to you this morning. This one thing that I don't know what to do with, that I don't know how to move forward. I don't know what the next step is. God, I give it to you and I ask for your help. And I trust that you are going to make a way where I can see no way. Will you pray that prayer with me? And So let me pray and then let's sing and just eyes on God in this moment. The burden is not on your shoulders. Hand it over. God, for every person right now, that situation is at the forefront of their mind, whatever it is, where they cannot see a way through, where they don't know the answers, where it feels too overwhelming to think about. Lord, in this moment, we declare in faith that you are the way maker. We hand over these situations to you. We lay them down at your feet as your children, and we say, God, would you make a way where there is no way? Would you lead us through when we cannot see where to go? Lord, we honor you, we worship you, and now we want to declare it in song. This is who you are. You are the way maker. We give it to you now in Jesus' name. Sing this film, let's push in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. We make a miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. We make a
is a miracle working God. Amen? Amen. Well, it's great to see you. Why don't you have a seat? Thanks for coming. If you've just joined us online as well, welcome. Good to have you here. Um, it's been a good week um, for our church and for our staff in particular. And um, the main reason, I mean, there's a number of reasons for that, is that Amy Bond has officially begun as our children's ministry lead. So why don't you welcome her wherever she is, around somewhere. There she is. Come on up, Amy. I'm going to get a microphone for you. Um, because I would love to pray for her this morning. Speaking of microphones, I was over there sort of just worshipping, and I, um, I almost went in sort of like a prayer worship, um, not remembering I was still holding my microphone. And I could have uh, ruined the worship experience for all of you this morning if that microphone had got anywhere near my face. Um, but thankfully we got it. Amy, welcome. I mean, it's not welcome to church. You've been around way longer than I have. Um, but great to have you here, and we are so thrilled um, to have you on staff and having started this week. Before we get some people up to pray for you, um, I, there's plenty of time for you to share vision and ideas and feel free to reach out to Amy and get in touch. Um, but what's one thing you're excited about now you've kicked off? Um, well, I'm really excited. Uh, this morning I was up very, very early because I genuinely get up early, but I just had such a buzz. And I'm just really excited to be journeying with the kids and being able to uh, see God move through the next generation and uh, really encourage us as a church because they're such a living, breathing part. And um, going on the back of what our church vision is, just building that hive of bees that are just so centered about uh, around Jesus in the kids' work. So that's, I'm really excited for what God's going to do. I feel pumped. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> I am pumped as well. <laughs> And I would say as well, like we have got an amazing kids team and it is never a bad day to encourage the people on our kids teams. And if you see them and you find them, just to thank them for the amazing work that they do. But also as well, if you're here and you're thinking, actually, I've been wondering about getting involved in something in church. Um, and you think that children's ministry could be something that would interest you or you'd be passionate about. Can I just encourage you, like reach out to Amy have a coffee with her, talk to her, hear her vision, because I've heard some of it, and I'm really excited, and I think you would be too if you get to hear it from Amy. So this could be a great opportunity, maybe a little trigger to step out and say, actually, yeah, I feel like I could do something here as well. Um, but I'd love to pray for Amy, and I've asked um, Serena and Jen, who have just been absolute pillars in our kids' work um, for so many years, if you guys could come up, um, and Amy, you can hand over your... Yeah, let's thank these guys as well. Um, Just through it all, there's so many stories behind all of this, and I wish we had time to share it, but Jen and Serena, like, in front of you now are three absolute pillars of bringing up, discipling our children week in, week out. And so, yeah, like I say, don't be shy in encouraging them and thanking them. But Jen, Serena, um, would you guys pray for Amy and for you, the church, as well? Would you reach out your hands and join us as we now pray for Amy as she kicks off? Uh, before we pray, I just want to say we are so, so grateful that God has put on Amy's heart that she's to lead the children. Um, I just did it for nine months to help fill in. Serena's been going way, way longer than that, involved with the children. But it needs a leader to really take hold of it and take it somewhere. And Amy, you are that person not only a great worship leader, but a great leader of children. And we just want to be thankful today for you. So should we pray? Yeah, Father, I just want to thank you for Amy. Lord, not only is she a leader, she's obviously, she's able to teach children. She's such an example with her own children as we look on and see what a great mum she is. And Father, we feel we can totally trust now our children to Amy. And we pray, Lord, we know that Amy is so creative in many, many ways. And we pray that that creative spirit will just be evident in everything she does with the children. As she builds team, as she builds the children up in their faith. So Father, today we want to say thank you. We have prayed for many, many months, probably a few years now, for someone to come and lead 
the children and thank you for today in Jesus name yes Lord Jesus we thank you so much for Amy and for bringing this to our heart and mind to come on staff to come on team and to lead our kids work father we thank you that first and foremost she's a sister to all of us in our church we thank you that she's a worshiper of you and we thank you that as she steps into this role and has already started this week already, Lord, I thank you for the vision that you've given to her. I thank you for the love for our children and for our families. And Father, I thank you for all our team. I thank you for all of them that have stepped in over these last few years and have served and for some who've served for many more years under Mary. And we just thank you for each one of them. And I pray that as they get to know Amy and we get to know her and we serve together, we work together. We have fun together, Father, we pray your blessing on the whole team and all our families. We thank you that we are one body, we are one family, we are one church, whatever generation we see ourselves in. We thank you that we can learn from each other and we thank you, Lord, that you have such a massive heart for our children, that you love them so much and we thank you for the privilege it is of getting to know them and being part of their journey of faith. Pray your blessing on Amy and her whole family. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amazing. Why don't we give all of these guys a round of applause? Good times are ahead. If you're a young person as well, and I know I can see there's quite a few young people around, um, you, you might remember, we've mentioned it now a couple of times, that we are taking a whole group of young people to the New Day conference in the UK in the summer, and things are starting to heat up on the New Day front, which is very exciting. Um, I'm told by Samuel that we've had nearly 20 of our young people express some interest. I had a meeting with Joel at St. Paul's. They're getting up towards 20. There's some other churches getting involved. Our hope and our dream is that between us, we're going to be taking 50 or 60 young people from Jersey um, over to New Day in the summer. So can I say, if you are a young person and you want to get involved, we need forms, and Samuel is the person to speak to. And he's got all of the forms that you might require if you want to start signing up and make sure your name is down. Um, and hassle your parents until those forms are done. I give you permission. Um, because New Day is going to be worth it. It'll be worth you getting there if you can. All of the sort of logistical planning is starting to go on in the background. The other thing that I will say at this time is don't let finances be a hindrance. We want to help every young person who wants to go to New Day to go to New Day. So if you're sitting there and feeling like, um, a little round of applause, um, if you're sitting there and feeling like, um, oh, we can't afford this, we can't do it, will you talk to us, talk to Samuel, talk to one of the team, and we will sit down with you and we will try and work out a plan. And if we can get your young person to New Day, we will get them there. And maybe the other side of that coin is you're sitting here and you're saying, actually, you might have a young person or not have a young person, but you're like, I love the sound of this, this is exciting, I want to invest in the youth. You might be sitting there and being like, actually, I would love to sponsor a young person to go to New Day or contribute towards a young person going to New Day. And if that's you, we would also love to hear from you because that's how we can make this whole picture work. I would love it if we get and see 60 young people from across Jersey over in the UK worshipping Jesus in the summer. It's, gonna be, it's a huge festival, by the way. It's going to be amazing. Um, but we need all of your help and contribution. So feel free to chat to us chat to Samuel, and we will do everything we can to get as many young people as we can on a plane, on a boat, whatever it takes, on a pedalo across the channel to um, parents. We are not taking your young people on pedalos across the channel. Um, not this year, anyway. We'll see how it goes in moving forward. Um, but yeah, and young people, just make it happen if you can. You will not regret it. Um, one more thing before we um, send the kids and young people out. When we did our Vision Sunday, um, a, oh gosh, oh my gosh, time is flying, um, about a month ago now, and we talked about flourishing for the people of Jersey, and we talked about bees and hives and gardens, and in particular, we talked about wanting to gather stories from you, from our congregation, from people that say, actually, yeah, there is something that I feel God has put on my heart that not only I can bring into the church community, but also I can reach out of my church community to see flourishing for people in various different ways. 
And off the back of that, I had a really um, interesting and exciting coffee with two people in our community, um, John Jefferson, who many of you know, and also Amanda, who I'm going to invite. Amanda is here, up onto the stage now. Because I just wanted to, I guess, reflect or um, get Amanda to share a little bit of what we chatted about at that coffee. Because to me, it was a perfect example of everything our vision is about, which is equipping and empowering you as you go out into your gardens to see people flourish. So will you join me in welcoming Amanda to the stage? <laughs> Amanda, welcome. For, the, for those of you who don't know Amanda, this is Amanda. I've done the first bit of your intro for you. Um, but will you share with us a little bit of your story? Where are you from? How long have you been in Jersey? Um, um, lastly, this is my first time on stage since I was about eight dressed as a teddy bear uh, on my school performance, so uh, you'll have to bear with me. I'm It's only through God's grace and will that I've actually agreed to come up. I'm really nervous. Amen. Um, so I'm from Cambridge. We've been here for a couple months. I originally have a degree in psychology, and then I went on to study personal training. I wanted to actually get involved with helping young children in schools learn about nutrition and exercise, because I believe that if we help the children, then they'll grow up to become a generation that then helps their children. Um, I went on to specialize in stress management and behavior change in adults, and then biomechanics and posture correction and assessments, and then went on to do my level four personal train, um, my level four sports massage and rehab qualification, because I wanted to be able to physically help the people who were in pain, um, who weren't really getting anywhere with the exercise correction, and then went on to do cupping and medical acupuncture. So that is amazing. That is an incredible skill set. Um, and what, so I think my question is, what stirred in you, like when we were talking about bees and gardens and stuff, and what triggered you? Because you were the one that reached out, and I know you chatted to John, and he's got some thoughts too. What was it that sort of got you thinking off the back of that when it comes to our church community? So um, in Cambridge, I actually had already started the process of trying to set up some sort of uh, department within the church that helped people with their physical health. Um, but I was then called to move to Jersey, and I was very stuck with it, whether I was leaving behind the place that had um, become home to me in the church. And if I was coming to Jersey, I was like, oh, is God going to be you know, annoyed at me, or is this wrong? Um, and I was really desperately looking for a sign to say, it's okay, you can move, you can move churches, and maybe this is where you're meant to be. Um, and then we had, the week before that Vision Sunday, I was sat in here and I was thinking, well, maybe I could do that here. Maybe um, there's a calling for me here and maybe I should speak to somebody about it. But I didn't really know anybody and I hadn't spoken to anybody yet. And then the weekend of Vision Sunday, John came up to me randomly um, and he introduced himself and his wife and his kids to me and my children. And I didn't know this, but actually John is a personal trainer. Um, and they were really friendly and lovely. And then we had Vision Sunday, and I just heard this voice loud as day saying, you should help my people. Uh, you can do it. You can help my people. And I sat there, and I was like, oh, d I don't know. You know, who am I? I'm nobody special. Um, so I went out, and at the end, I said to Alice, actually, I was like, oh, I have been having a thought, actually. Who do you think is the right person to talk to? And she said, well, actually, John has already been having these conversations and thoughts, and why don't you guys speak to Ben? So I messaged Ben, and then... So here we up. are. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like um, <coughs> this is dangerous, because now no one will speak to me, because they'll be like, you're going to make me go on the stage and tell everyone. Um, you did say I didn't have to. This I will is true. Give him Thank that. you very you much. You did say I didn't have to. You have heard it. Um, exactly, because as soon as we had this coffee, and John, John was there as well, just the, the buzz and the excitement of watching two people who are in their industry with their expertise saying, asking the question, what could I do with a kingdom perspective just brought me alive. And to me, it was a microcosm of what we're trying to actually encourage all of you guys to do, to say, actually, it's not about having to develop new skills or ideas or thoughts or passions. It's saying, God, this is who I am. This is what I've got. What can I do for you? And so I guess my final question for you is, in your head and with John and with me and with anyone else interested in this sort of thing, what could you see? Like, what's your vision? What could be the next steps for this when it comes to physical well-being? I actually had an idea of something I thought might work. I haven't tried it yet, so bear with me. Um, I thought if everybody closes their eyes, I'm going to ask a few questions, and if this relates to you, you put your hand up, and then at the end, we'll kind of have an idea of how many people this would help or affect. Let's go. Is that okay? 
Okay, so if you feel that you have been wanting to do something about your physical body recently or over the last however long, um, just raise a hand. So if you think that you've been wanting to lose weight or get fitter or stronger, whatever it may be, join a gym, start walking more, getting out more, keep your hand up. You can raise the other hand if this also applies to you. But if you have aches and pains or things that have that stop you from living your best quality of life, so backache, knees, hips, whatever, stop you from being able to play with your children or work as effective as you think you could, now keep your hands up. I'm not going to ask you to raise any feet or, or whatever, but if this applies to anybody close to you that you might know, if there's somebody that you might know that thinks that I could be in a better health, better physical body, put your hand up. Okay, now if you're all comfortable with it, you can all open your eyes with your hands up and just have a look around. I've got all mine up. So I think, yeah, that the answer, thank you very much for participating. It would have been really awkward if no one did. Um, it would have been the healthiest group of people I've ever been in front of. I just wanted to say as well, so the whole thing to me comes down to um, 1 Corinthians where it says, our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, who you whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. So my belief is that um, if we could set up some workshops, I mean, gyms are expensive, personal trainers are expensive, massages are expensive, physios, um, we could potentially do it in a way that's an affordable option for people to be able to help themselves with all of these things that we've spoken about. So whether it be a workshop one day where you come in and we do a wellness workshop on healthy eating or pain management or stress management, um, exercise classes, you get a support group with it, some courses that go along with exercise or you know a day Amazing. when you come in and I actually physically treat you with massage or acupuncture or something. I love it. It's so like, can you see the passion just coming through? And this to me is exactly what we are looking for. And perhaps you're here and it might even be an Amanda and John's passion as well. You might be like, yes, physical well-being. I've been thinking for so long, we need to do some more on physical well-being in a church community. Would you reach out to one of them? Because these are how these bubbles and spheres just start to explode into life. And can we thank Amanda as well? Thank you so much for coming and sharing with thank us. You. I'll tell you that. Um, we would love to hear more of these stories and passions because I know that they are all throughout this congregation and this is our vision and this is our dream. Anyway, I won't take up any more time. Kids and young people, this is your moment to get on out of here and go. I think young people, you're heading to the dance studio again. Kids, you've got an array of exciting activities and we will take a couple of minutes and the next voice you hear will be Kirsty's. I was buried beneath my shame.
Good morning, everyone. It's good to... Uh, morning, Eddie. Um, well, as you can see, we're doing things a little bit differently again today, and uh, I've got a couple of guests here this morning, some friends that we're going to be sharing with. So we've got Sue on the left and Shirai on the right, for those of you who, who don't know them. And um, we're going to be having a conversation which, but before we start our conversation, I'm just going to give us a brief intro and remind us of the series that we're currently in at the moment, which is called The Dogs. And we are in week three of The Dogs. So if this is your first week here, you may be thinking that's a strange name for a series. And it's it comes out of um, a folklore story um, of an elder passing wisdom onto a younger listener. And the elder described the battle between two dogs. And the dogs represent a battle, it's a metaphor for the inner conflict that can go on between us, between right and between wrong. And that's something that we can all live with. And when the younger listener asks about this battle and asks which dog wins, the elder answers, whichever one you feed. So using that analogy and recognizing that we all have this inner conflict within us, we're looking at how we feed the right dog in our lives. Ways in which we can help ourselves make the right choices as followers of Jesus. So last week, we looked at the upward life. So we had Phil and Tim and Henry sharing about the importance of prayer and the importance of worship in our lives. And when we give those things a focus, how that can help us make the right choices, the upward life. So this week, we are going to be thinking together with Shirai and Sue about the outward life, living a life that is focused on others and not just ourselves. So, in Paul's letter to the Galatians, he wrote the following. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. So like the two dogs tale that we heard a minute ago, Paul talks here about the inner conflict, about two different ways of living. He's talking about either indulging in the flesh or serving one another humbly in love. We can live by the spirit or we can gratify the desires of the flesh. Now when I was looking up about Paul's term, the flesh, I found John Piper gave quite this helpful definition of the flesh in his Desiring God blog. And he describes it like this. Flesh is any human action or achievement without dependence upon the Holy Spirit and without glorifying, exalting, trusting, and valuing Jesus Christ. So it's without any human action or achievement without dependence on the Holy Spirit and without glorifying, trusting, and valuing Jesus. So when we're in the Spirit, we're doing those things. When we're in the flesh, we're not doing those things. And in this passage, it says that we have the freedom. He encourages the church in Galatia, Galatians to use their freedom in the right way. So freedom comes with a choice. 
the choice of who to serve. Do we serve the flesh, ourselves, living self-indulgent lives, do as I please, irrespective of my neighbor, or do we serve others humbly in love? And Paul encourages us to live by the Spirit. And what that looks like is serving one another humbly in love and loving your neighbor as yourself. Now, Jesus is also pretty clear that if we're his disciples and followers, what we should do. In Matthew's gospel, we read that he's approached by a Pharisee who asks him this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So love the Lord, love others. And in John's gospel, we read how Jesus, having shared a Passover meal with his disciples, he's washed their feet. He's about to be betrayed arrested and crucified and he says this to his disciples so I give you now a new commandment love each other just as much as I have loved you for when you dem demonstrate the same love I have I have for you by loving one another everyone will know that you're my true followers so what the first thing that struck me about this was that these are commands, that they're not suggestions. The new commandment is love each other just as much as I have loved you. Now, when I was researching this as well, there are over 50 instructions in the New Testament about how we're to relate to one another. It's probably worth a little uh, Google and worth looking them up. There's a lot of them that are quite challenging. But we're told not just to love one another, but we're told to care for one another, bear with one another, forgive one another, comfort one another, be kind to one another, be at peace with one another, live in harmony with, pray for, encourage. Now, as I said, this list goes on for about 50. It's worth taking a look at. So God created us to live in relationship with him and with one another. So it's pretty clear what the Bible wants us to do. But as we all know, we don't always behave like that. And it's not always the easy choice that it can seem. We can have this other voice or this other dog that can often be telling us in our minds to do the opposite. It's a choice we have. It's a decision that we need to make daily hourly sometimes, I think, to be other-focused. And like most things in life, it doesn't just happen. We've got to be intentional about it. So that's all very theoret theoretical. And what we wanted to do was bring it down to a practical level. So this is why I've introduced my lovely co-hosts here today. So Sue and Shirai have both been part of Freedom for a long time. And uh, both, I think, pretty nervous, so I'm very grateful that you both come on stage for the first time. Um, so, Sue, for those people that don't know you, tell us three things about you. Okay, so three things. Um, firstly, I'm married to Terry, and we have three grown-up children. I was going to say almost grown-up, but that didn't go down well with them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm... I'm also retired from nursing just about two years ago, but um, I should say semi-retired because I can't quite drag myself away and I, I keep going back in to help with the clinics. And thirdly, I don't know if you can notice, but I am from Wales and uh, I'm currently learning Welsh with the Duolingo app and it's great fun. I'm on day 74 today. Yeah. Can, you give <laughs> us a, can you give us a quick, I don't know. <laughs> Could you say, say something in Welsh then okay. for us? So, Sitoch hi eglwys. That means, how are you, church? How are you, church? And you can all say, Diawn diolch, which means, 
very well, thank you. Diane Dioch. Diane Dioch. <laughs> and wipe the microphone after. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Shirai, tell us three things about you that people might not know who know you and those that don't know you. All right. I don't know if I should count this as the first one. I was about to do it right now. I was like, what did I get myself into? <laughs> Um, no, that's not the best. <laughs> but I'm a working mom. I'm married to Norman um, and I have two kids, um, a teenager and a preteen. Um, and I was born and raised in Zimbabwe and came to Jersey, um, yeah, a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> what year was it when you actually came? Oh dear, 2008. Okay, <laughs> so same year we came back to the island, so a long, a, a while. So, Sue, you said you're retired. I did. Or semi-retired. Semi-retired. Yeah. Uh, you could fill yourself with lots of your free time, with lots of self-indulgent things. I did. I, did. <laughs> I don't think you do. No, not. No, no. <laughs> I know you're involved with the Grace Trust lunches. I know you're involved with Cry Charity Shop. And you've started recently um, some work with primary school and mm. children reading. So... Tell us about that and why you are okay. involved in those things. So um, Grace Trust, uh, one Sunday a few years ago, Vinnie put out um, an ask for some volunteers to help with the lunches. And um, a group of us, after the service, thought, oh, we could do that. Um, so yep, we got in touch with Vinnie and said that we'd like to help. So we go once a month on a Saturday morning, and then for the lunches. We help serve the meals, and chat to the peeps, and um, then clear up afterwards, do the dishes. Thankfully, they've got a big dishwasher. <laughs> An important <laughs> role, though. Yeah, yeah, no, it's great. And um, it's lovely to support Vinny, cause he, and he's so passionate about the Grace Trust, and yeah, it feels good to, uh, to be involved with the Grace Trust. And we are called to be servant-hearted, I've written at the bottom of this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cry. Uh, Terry and I help in the Cry furniture shop, uh, not on a regular basis, but um, a, a while ago, the lovely Jane asked us if we wouldn't mind helping out. So we go on an ad hoc basis, really. We, if there's holidays or if there's any sickness, and they ask, it's normally a Monday afternoon, and yeah, that's that's good. Um, and strangely enough, strangely enough, one of those God instances, um, I got the scripture, uh, we are not our own, but we are bought with a price, which um, Amanda mentioned earlier, that we are God's, and yeah, he bought us with a price, and it's good to, to give back uh, to the community. Um, okay. You can say in your most recent venture yep. is ECOF. Slightly different. Yeah, slightly different. So ECOF is a charity. It stands for Every Child Our Future. So um, that all came about years ago when my children were younger and in school. I'd go in and listen to the children read just to help out. And as as I'm retired or semi-retired, I like a structure to my day. So I thought, okay, what could I do? And it all came about really quickly. And I, I believe God was definitely in it. Um, got chatting to somebody when I was in the cry shop, actually, volunteering. She was there and she uh, belongs to the charity. I can't remember her name. And she said, oh, yes, uh, I belong to ECOF. So I, I took a day's training, if you like, and they allocate you to a school, and they give you three children, and it's just an hour a week, and it's lovely, actually. Um, it's not pink and fluffy, that's something I got, because some of the children can be a little bit challenging, a little bit boisterous, but you go in, and the teacher chooses the children. They may not get as much attention at home and benefit from some one-to-one -one contact with somebody who is just focusing totally on them and one little incident that happened because I was I went in a few weeks and obviously you're building relationship and they didn't always want to come to be read to 
Um, but this one time, this little girl, she's, she's quite boisterous. And she was, it's to help them with all aspects of reading, like even just turning the pages. So she wanted to turn the pages and she was scrunching the pages as she was turning it. And I was like, ooh, no, because I, and I said, oh, don't hurt the page. And she said, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> she apologized to the page, bless her heart. But then she, she got it and then she was able to just Gently do that. Yeah, that was lovely. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah. Thanks, Sue. So, Shirai, your working mum, you work full time. You've got two children, husband as well, let's look after. <laughs> How do you find time to be outward focused or thinking about others in the workplace as well during your working day? I'm sure that can be quite a challenge when you're doing a job and uh, not have probably much spare time to yourself. Um, for me, it's about taking every time and opportunity that comes my way. Um, so in the workplace, you might not be able to chat to somebody, preach to somebody. Um, but as I say, it is about every opportunity which comes my way. Um, it's also about living Christian values, um, because I think the best preaching we can do is by the way we live and not what we say. Um, I'm also in an organization whereby there are other Christians. Um, when I joined, one person came up to me and said, are you a Christian by any chance? Uh, it was during COVID, um, well, just after COVID. And he just went to me, oh, let's pray. And I thought we were going to go in a room. He just knelt there and started praying. And I was like, what did oh, I wow. get? You know, um, and it's naturally, um, I'm outgoing. For those who know me, I, I make the habit of going to greet people around me, greet new faces. If I don't know anyone at work, if I haven't met them before, I walk up to them and say, oh, hello, I'm Sharai, and I believe when you start having conversations with people, that's when people open up to you. And that's when you can then, you know, they start asking you about your life. Why is it you're always so calm? Why is it because you're always smiling? Then, you know, that creates that conversation. It's, it's not because of me, it's the grace of God. And then you can start having those conversations. So for me, the major thing is just, you know, having that intention. And sometimes it's just, praying about it, saying, God, well, not that I do it all the time, but sometimes there's so much hurt sometimes in the world. You see people around you, and you can tell that they are carrying so many things. So sometimes mm -hmm. it's just about taking time to say, how can I help? Um, because I believe we are, well, in the workplaces we are, in the help we do. Um, God has placed us there, f you know, in such a time as this, you know, for a Absolutely. particular reason, yeah. for this season. So sometimes it's being receptive to say, yes, I'm really busy. Um, probably I don't really want to talk to this person or I want to put my earphones on and then just <laughs> focus, uh, which I do sometimes. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's just taking that opportunity to say, you know, what is around me, who is around me and how can I help? Mm, definitely. So I think you've just touched on s something we were gonna say. Uh, um, so I'll start with Sue for this. So. What are some of the things that you think stop us having an outward focus and sort of reaching out, loving one another, as Jesus commanded us to, to do? Well, I did give this some thought. I, th I think it depends on the person. There can be past hurts, maybe, that hold them back. Um, they're not sure of their ability. Maybe fear full of judgment that what they do is not good enough. Um, and anxiety, you know, I'm quite anxious up here. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like stepping out of your comfort zone <laughs> to do something that you're not possibly, say, not familiar with. I mean, if you choose something that you do normally, then that's, it makes it a little bit easier. Um, yeah. Yeah. Shrai, anything to add to that? Yeah, just to add to that, it's uh, sometimes feeling that you need to be at a certain level um, I don't know if anyone relates to this to say you're looking for a perfect time to serve. Um, Ecclesiastics talks about um, those who watch the wind will never sow and those who watch the clouds will never reap. Um, it's a challenge with busy lives. Um, I don't think there'll be ever a time whereby you say this is the right to serve. And um, Sue touched on being good enough. I think there's the comparison trap. Um, 
I'll be honest and say, um, well, I was in kids last week, so when I watched the session from last week, I was, geez, they're so eloquent. <laughs> um, so there is the comparison trap, yeah. a tendency to yeah, look sure. at the person next to you and say, what do I have to offer? Um, but yeah, it's not about the next person, it's about the gifting which is upon your life and then just, yeah. Yeah, and the person, that I think the people that God's placed you in amongst, you uniquely have that group of people around you, don't you? But uh, yeah, and as you said as well, I think the busyness thing, I think sometimes we can go through our days so busy that we don't sometimes just take a breath or look up and aware of people around us as well, are we? Can I just add to that? I you think can. <laughs> I think as well it's, um, it's trust in God. Absolutely. And if you put yourself... If you're willing to take that step, he will um, fill you and in empower you to do what he, he wants you to do. Because yeah. we are the vessels, aren't we, for the for Jesus. And yeah. Just do it for As him, really. As we step out, not before often, is no, it? No, no, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> we're not it's impl- always <laughs> that first step. Yeah. And then, oh, things Confidence fall into can grow from that place yeah. and you'll get more confident. So, as well as working and various voluntary things, you both serve, as you said, Shirai, you serve in children's and youth ministries. You're part of a large life group as well, which have been for many years. And Sue, you're on prayer ministry, welcome, pastoral team, been helping out at Alpha. Um, So, it's not just outside our community, our hive, um, why do you think it's important to be outward focused within church too? Um, okay, I think, I mean, it, it's good to be involved with people in church because then you get to know them. Sorry about the glasses, I can't see without them and then I can't see with them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what a difference. Um, yeah, it's good to get involved because you do, you get to know people, you build community with people and it builds your faith as you share stories with people you think oh they're struggling with that as well um and you can help each other um, as you discuss things um and just sharing jesus with others i've put here and just to be kind to everybody that you meet you know even in the church i mean even not in church when you're out of outside as well mm. yeah um, we all have a gifting upon our lives and through serving others, that's how we grow. And um, I think there's also a challenge to say, um, you know, I don't know my gift, how do I serve? But I think it's when you are serving sometimes that um, through serving that you discover your gift. Um, so I think it's important for us to do that. It also builds, um, it builds the church. Um, it's, it's through serving, you know, it's, if we look at Jesus, that's that's the example. That's the example we all look at. And he served us. He served people around him. And, yeah, I think it's good to serve because of the example we have in Christ. Yeah. And as he said, we're to follow and love him. As uh, Sorry, I looked up because the passages were up on the screen earlier. Um, but, yeah, but we want to be real here, too. And it's not always a rewarding thing to do. Serving and loving, loving other people people's can be hard work and difficult sometimes can't it so i'm not just talking about terry norman or adrian there are other people in our lives that we uh, need to (laughs) manage and love and relationships but um but it can be tricky relationships and uh, people aren't always appreciative of if we reach out to them in love they might shut us down so any tips on how how to manage loving people uh, difficult to love people or loving people in difficult days i suppose that's what i would uh, ask either of you sure i'll let you go first this time yeah uh, i think it's also about realizing that people are different so as i said earlier on i'm quite outgoing so i'll be you know rushing to you to say hi or come over let's have coffee yeah it's not accepted all the time it's not always appreciated but it's also having an understanding that we are different people Mm -hmm. um what um you know, you know, might make me function or might work for me, might not work for the other party. And sometimes it's, yes, as m- I, I may be keen to help or keen to serve, but maybe it's about referring that person to somebody else. Um, 
So yeah, it's an appreciation that we are different. Um, even if it is rejected, it does not mean you, you don't try. And sometimes, as you said, there is cost and survey, and it can be monetary, it can be time. And sometimes in trying to serve others, you know, people may be conscious that, you know, you're also going into their time. So just appreciating that people are different. And if it is not me, m yeah, maybe I can refer them to somebody else. Yeah, not taking it personally and yes. uh, <laughs> or, or thinking, I'm never going to give that person a hug again. And, and sometimes you might not realize that though it might not be appreciated now, it has functioned, I've, uh, it has worked or it has inspired them or it has moved them to another level. Of people who have come many years later, I'll give an example of somebody who came to Freedom. I went and reached out to them, come to our live group, come home for dinner, took them for dinner, took them for tea. Um, yeah, it, yeah, it didn't Persever seem like it worked. Yeah, I did try to persevere. So I took a step back. And many years later, they came to me and said, I don't know why you stopped. <laughs> 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 they appreciated it, but then I realized that maybe the way I express myself is, is different. Maybe the reaction I was expecting was totally different. So I think I learned to say we are, we are totally different. So m maybe the reaction I was yeah. expecting didn't come, but it was valued by that person at the time. Yeah, I suppose that often we could expect to see instant results in things when we either reach out to people or um, <coughs> there's a maybe we come with too high an expectation from others rather than just loving them, I suppose, maybe. Sue? I took it from the angle that, you know, if, you, if you're around people who are, who are difficult to love and they may be trying to not aggravate, but there's something going down. Um, just try not to react and respond mindfully and prayerfully. You know, pause what's happening in their lives, something could be going on, why they're being a bit bristly possibly, and yeah. just, yeah, just keep being kind all the time. Well, I said, give, us, give space and make a cup of tea. <laughs> <So> <laughs> give yourself some time. Um, yeah, and just that Jesus is with us and let him love through us and be aware of what the Holy Spirit is showing you through that interaction, um, which is great theoretically, but always not so easy practically. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've just listed the fruits of the Spirit, which we you know, try to grow in ourselves. Yeah, yeah. which are vital in all our relationships, yeah. I yeah. think, aren't they? Well, I've just looked at the time and it's quarter to 12 already. So time is uh, mm, ticking wow. on. I mean, this is such a large um, topic, really. We, we haven't touched on other things that we had thought about in terms of, like, walking and loving people can be really painful as well. Like, when um, if people go through difficult times, walking with them, there's a cost to that. So we, t we said about cost to our time, but there can be a cost to us personally sometimes with uh, walking with those people. But um, in all those things, and in all this, as we've just said, and the ladies have said so wonderfully, that we have Jesus that walks through us in all of this, that he's the one, his Holy Spirit, that equips us, that he um, is the one that can encourage us, and we do it out of a motivation, not for what we're going to get back from that other person, but because of what God has poured into us that we need to pour out. And as I was... Um, thinking about this today, it reminded me of several years ago when Tim spoke about his through flowology um, a theory that um, and here we had, we, he d found this bucket in the garden in his garden, it had um, full of stagnant water and uh, he, he likened it to what God pours into us if we just keep it to ourselves it doesn't bring life, it just grows stale, it grows stagnant. And he talked about having a hole in the bottom of this bucket so that that water can flow through. And as that water flows through, it doesn't become stale and stagnant, but it becomes life-giving water. And so that's all really what we're called to be and to have, is to have that, um, everything that's been poured into us, we're to pour out to others. And just to finish on one um, short story, I watched a video that was from the Global Leadership Summit, and they tell lots of, um, have little s short videos as part of their conference, and one was about a women's prison, 
and it was a lady who had watched a talk about kindness. She was an inmate, didn't say what she was in there for, but she, out of the talk, watching this talk, she decided that she was going to be a, make a list about all the things, acts of kindness that she could do within her prison. And um, so she started making this list. It had something as simple as smile at other people. It had um, offer somebody to go before you in a queue. It had if you see somebody talking to relatives on a telephone, give them a tissue. Simple acts of kindness. But this grew and they had several, they were interviewing several different women and saying this has grown into a movement in our prison. Even the prison guards are now looking for ways that, act, that they can actively do acts of kindness to other people. So it was just so powerful the way that one person had decided that they were going to change the way that they, would, they were going to act in a different way towards others. And in a prison you're pretty limited by what you can do, the resources that you had. But um, it was just very powerful that it, it that that wasn't um, it didn't stop um, the circumstances around her didn't stop what she was able to do. So um, we're going to draw our time to a close. Let's thank Sue and Shirai. Thank you very much <laughs> for sharing today. We're going to invite the band back on stage, please, and uh, we'll finish with our final song. Bit of set readjustment quickly. What a great challenge for us to be light, salt and light in the world, eh? Why don't you stand? We're going to sing together. Sing this Christ is enough for me. Christ is enough for me. Everything I need is in you. Everything I need, Christ is enough.
as always, we will have our prayer ministry team at the back. I just think um, on my heart, one particular group of people, that if this is you, I would really encourage you to get prayer before you leave today. If you were listening to this and you were just feeling, you know what, I would love to be more outward focused. I would love to be serving more, but I'm just so overwhelmed in myself. Or there's so much going on in me, I just don't know how to, I don't have any overflow. There's, I, I'm struggling. If that's you, will you go for prayer today? And just ask God for his peace and for him to lead you on that journey. Because I, I'm sure everyone in here, we've all felt like that at some point. We've had a heart to serve, but we've just felt there's so much going on. And it's just, I can't get out of my own head or whatever it is. I'm too exhausted. I'm too tired. Will you get prayer this morning and just ask for God's peace and guidance through whatever that season is that you're going through? And can we thank as well those guys who have come and shared their wisdom with us this morning? Thank you. Thank you. Um, I hope you see here, we're trying, like, there is so much richness in our community. That's the point we're trying to make over these weeks, these different voices, different passions, different experiences. It's because this church has never been about one or two or even five just preachers that preach. It's about all of us sharing what God is doing in our lives, shared wisdom, shared experience, and we all grow together. Amen. Amen. So thanks for coming this morning. We'll officially end the service there. Stick around for prayer, and we'll see you again next week.